Hey everybody. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about how we can use VS Code running on your own computer to connect to a remote virtual machine and um, develop code on it using the software you're used to on your own computer, but having that code run on the other computer, having access to the files on the other computer, etc. This is a really powerful tool in the current age of um, cloud computing because it makes it very easy for you to be able to access um, virtual machines running into the cloud and still bring a lot of the configurations you like for editing um, without having to kind of go do lots of installation yourself on the remote machine. If you just work on your own computer and this isn't something of interest to you, you should feel free to skip this video. Um, you know, if you're a Duke student, then this is something that you're probably going to run into a lot. Um, if you stumbled across this on YouTube and it's not relevant for you, feel free to skip ahead. So the first thing that we're going to do in order to make this work is install a package called the remote development package, which is down here. When we install it, um, you're going to see that it actually adds a number of different extensions to your computer. So let's see, by my count, one, two, three, four different packages that it's adding to your computer. These are a set of tools that are going to allow VS Code to connect to a remote computer so long as that remote virtual machine is running usually Linux, but some operating system that can handle SSH connections, which is kind of a standard command line way of computers interacting with one another. So once we have this installed, um, you will notice that VS Code has now added a little button over here on the sidebar called Remote Explorer. So we're going to click on this. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a new SSH target. So this is an SSH, um, or sorry, this is a virtual machine running Linux that is here at Duke um, that I have permissions to access. Oops. And VCM dash. And so all you have to do is type into this thing how you would SSH into this remote computer. Um, if you're working on a cloud service like Azure or AWS, when you create your virtual machine, you will usually have information given to you about how to do this. And then we just hit enter. So the first time that I'm going to try to connect, uh, it wants to know where the SSH configuration file is, where you want to store the information that you're using. The default usually makes sense and was what I use. If you're using Macs or Linux, you will usually see that it's located under your user folder, under your username as um, in a .ssh folder. So we're going to go ahead and use that. It says the host has been added. So now we're going to try to connect to this host. So now we're going to go over here and say um, connect to host in current window. And what we see is that it's doing a number of different things um, about the configuration. The first thing is it's saying that there's a fingerprint for this virtual machine. This is a way that this virtual machine tries to make sure that you are connecting to the machine you think to. Um, you know, if you got this from a credible source and you don't know the fingerprint, you're probably fine. If you're working in a serious cloud environment, um, you'll know how to look up your own um, uh, fingerprint. So I'm going to hit continue. Then it's going to ask me for the password for the system. Hit enter. So what you see down here in the bottom right that it says it's doing is it has now not only connected to this remote virtual machine via SSH, but it has gone ahead and installed some basic software that's going to make it possible for VS Code to interact directly with that thing. This is one of the really nice features. There's other editing environments that will allow you to connect to a remote virtual machine like Jupyter. Um, but to the best of my knowledge, as of today, July 1st, 2021, um, Basically, what you have to do is go onto the virtual machine first, install the software, set it up, and then you can connect from home. Here, everything you need to do is being done by the system itself. So now what's interesting is if I ask to open a folder, the list of files that I'm actually being shown are actually the folders that are on this remote computer. Right, so what we see listed here are not the files that are on my personal computer here on my desk, but the files that are on this virtual machine in the cloud. If I wanted to see files that are here on my personal computer, you can see there's a show local. Um, but what I'm going to do is open up my home folder on this remote computer. I'm going to tell it that I trust the files. And so now I can open up this Python file, and immediately we see that um, 
VS Code notices that I've opened a .py file on this remote computer and it asks if I want to install the extensions for Python. Um, so I'm going to hit yes here and then I'll show you a little bit more about what's going on. What this is actually doing is install, installing the Python extensions on the virtual machine. So if you go over here and you click on your extensions tabs on the left hand side, uh, we're getting a couple things popping up. One is select the Python interpreter. We talked about this before, VS Code. Um, you can switch between which installation of Python you actually want to use. And so we're going to reload our windows. Do, do, do. We're going to open this and then we're going to select a Python interpreter. Uh, on this computer, you can see it's identified two installations right off the bat. Uh, we're going to use the Python 3 version. Python 2, again, is not something you want to be using anymore in the world if you don't have to and know what you're doing. So we will use the Python 3 that's running on this remote computer. And so now we are running Python 3 on this remote computer. Now, as I said, if we look over here on the sidebar and we click on the extensions tab, you will now see that there's locally installed extensions and extensions that are on this virtual machine we're connected to by SSH. So on this remote computer, we have the Python extensions, but nothing else. And then on our own computer, we have all the things that we're kind of used to. But the things that we're not using locally are now grayed out because we are running those extensions from the remote computer. So now we're back to working in our familiar world. All of our keyboard shortcuts carry over. So if I do shift enter, I'm going to get a Jupyter window to pop up. You may see as this happens, it'll say you haven't installed Jupyter on this remote computer. Do you want to? And it will take the initiative to install that particular software. But now you're up and running and you're running Python on this remote computer in the other environment, right? And anything I do to this file, you know, if I do save as and call it hello world 2 and I save it, that's not being saved on this remote virtual computer, right? This is no longer um, working on my personal desktop. This is now something that's connected on the remote computer. So the other thing that I will flag for you if you know about it is um, if you don't want to enter your password every time you're trying to connect to one of these remote computers, um, VS Code is entirely comfortable using your SSH keys if you know what that is. Um, down in the description, I will put a little tutorial to show you how to set up SSH keys. But if you're working with the same virtual machine a lot, you can basically set it up so that there's something like a password, um, an SSH key being stored on your computer somewhere. And you have to put a copy of it on the remote computer computer once so that they can cross check them. And from that point on, anytime you try to connect, you'll connect without being asked for um, a password. So it's not always worth it if you're kind of just connecting to a computer once or twice, but it's really useful if you're connecting a lot in the future. Um, if you decide you need other extensions, right, you can choose what you want to install locally and what you want to install on this remote computer. On the remote computer, just as you could before, you could switch interpreters if you want a different one. Um, we can also, whoops. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, you also still have access to a command line on this remote computer. So if I do uh, control forward tick, I always forget the, the direction. I'm now running whoops, um, a bash session that's running on this remote computer. So basically, you can do whatever you want to do on this remote computer with almost no overhead, all your familiar keyboard shortcuts, everything running in the nice familiar way. So I think that's great. Um, in our next video, I'm going to move on to talking a little bit about how we manage settings in general within VS Code and kind of what the setting framework looks like and understanding some of the output you get. Um, but hopefully that sets you up well for connecting remotely to systems. Thanks so much.